he say stand? Well, it's good exercise. Mike again? Well, Mike doesn't know you like I do. Oh, I should have brought you here in your wheelchair. Well, we should. I don't know. Linda, lately everything's been a struggle with you. The only good thing about today is that soon this whole thing will be done with. It's not like that. We used to be so close. We are too close. Please sit down, Linda. We could do something you like to pass the time. We could sing. Oh, baby, sing. Nobody's here. You know, Dr. Vega said singing is also very therapeutic. You want to exercise muscles? Well, then sing. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Come on, Linda. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. He don't say my son sign away. That's it. That's the way we do it. Yay, let's give a cheer. Hooray for the Santo sisters, the fab new duo appearing nightly at the downtown club now through Easter Sunday. Hey, are we going to knock them dead or what? You in your new green suit, me in my lavender dress. I'll wheel you the entire length of Fifth Avenue. Uh, no, no, uh, I got a date. What? Easter Sunday, I got a date. A date? With who? Mommy, mommy. Hello, honey. <coughs> Hi, honey. Hello, Janet. Good afternoon. Look, Janet, this isn't against you. I just want to be friends. Thanks. Good day. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Forget about it. I read the brief I know about the fire and all. I'm sorry. I told you to forget about it. I'm used to it. Are you the judge? Actually, I'm the arbitrator. Shall we begin then? Today is Monday, April 9th. It is exactly 2 p.m. My name is Helen Silver. This is an arbitration in room 335, Family Court, 60 Lafayette Street, County of New York. This recording is a legal transcription. I will attest to its accuracy and see that it be sealed pending appeal. Linda Santos, age 34, is currently the ward of her sister, Janet Santos, age 28. You are Janet Santos? That is correct. The plaintiff is Michael Gilman. Yes. All right. Now, each of you has agreed to abide by my decision. Please respond by saying yes or I agree. And Janet? I agree. Michael. Mike. Well, it looks like I have no choice. They said getting a real judge takes months. I am a qualified, experienced arbitrator and a lawyer. My decisions are as binding as those of any court. Therefore, Michael, uh, Mike, uh, do you agree? Yes. And then, for the record? Uh, hey, hey, what about me? Don't I have to agree? Uh, excuse me? She said, what about me? Don't I have to agree? I will state for the record that if two parents were fighting over the custody of a child, the judge will sometimes ask the child for his or her preferences. This, of course, is not legally binding. I'm not a child. You're not a child. Got it. All right, Linda. Even though you are neither plaintiff nor defendant, I will ask you, do you agree to be bound by my decision? If this is a good one. <laughs> Let's hope it is. All right. Now, I have to read some things into my records. Linda Santos was born with the umbilical cord wrapped around her throat. Oxygen deprivation to the brain, either during or before birth, caused motor damage, a condition known as cerebral palsy. Now, we'll begin with Mike, because... Wait, does your report include the care needed for simple things like bathing or getting dressed or preparing food? I object. Is that the right way to say it? In court, yes. Here we're a little less formal. A male judge, or arbitrator, would see things more from my point of view. That's true. But a male judge might also bend over backwards to be fair to the opposite gender. Would it help you to know that in 288 hearings such as this one, not a single one of my judgments has ever been reversed? And what are the terms for a reversal? Well, an error in law, in the precedence and principle, the law is clear. I go strictly according to the law. What about people and feelings like, like love? Love? No, 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 no. Do not let him fool you with that love talk. He does not even intend to marry her. He can't now, I told you. And she'll go along with anyone who's nice to her. No, no, stop fighting. I thought she'd be safe in the hospital. I never heard of her. Well, look at her. I don't want you to spy. They both. They both love me. They both love you? Yes, yes, I know, and sometimes it comes out angry. Now, Linda, I need you to be quiet because Michael is going to go 
first, okay? Thank you. I met Linda in, in physical therapy. I, uh, I work with people whose muscles need special training to respond. Um, I graduated here from this May. That's when we can get married. That's when I start getting paid. I'm just a trainee now, but my supervisor says I'm very good. And you're currently not receiving any income of any sort? No, I get SSI. That's, that's supplemental security income. But I'll, give you, I'll be giving that up once I start getting paid. blood relation would make. Every day I see her under the bus that takes her to and from the hospital day program. Someone has to be there when she gets home. And every day when she arrives, I'm always there. It, it sounds like you don't work. I'm a librarian in PS21. Believe me, I work. Now, was there, there wasn't any mention of your parents in the report. No, they died in a car accident when I was still in college. I work nights. I made it through. And do you plan to get married someday? I don't even think about such things. I have responsibilities. Well, tell me, what do you do socially? Socially? Uh, you know, friends, dates, clubs, hobbies, special talents. Oh, I take my sister to the park. But what do you do when it's raining or when the weather's bad? We have a VCR. The store near us rents old movies real cheap. We watch them again and again. We even act out some of the scenes, huh, Linda? Here, we'll show you one. Here's, come on, Linda. Here's looking. Here's looking at you, kid. See? You heard it. Here's looking at you, kid. You see how close we are? We do everything together. And he has no right to just come in and disrupt our lives like this. Now, hold on a minute. Like I said before, I physical therapy. Now, I got into physical therapy because after the accident, um, the, the social worker at the hospital where I got my skin grafts, she, she got me to do work with people worse off. First with blind kids, but at first I expected to jump at the sight of me. But instead, they responded to the tone of my voice. Kindness. A great cure for someone who felt sorry for himself. And then I worked with slow kids, mentally challenged. They have a new fancy way of saying it every year. Anyway, I was glad I got what I still got. Well, I think I can render a decision, Ben. No, my turn, my turn. Okay, Linda, we have the time. I'll give you a chance to speak. That's fair. Now I need you to speak very, very slowly for me, all right? My? I'm sorry, I just don't understand. Mike makes me laugh. Jenna treats me like baby. Her sister treats her like a moron, and she's bright. Well, if it weren't for me, she'd be in some home where they let cripples sit around all day in their own ways. Now, I want just translation, please. Thank you. I'll do that. No, Mike. But, Linda, that's my job. No, Mike translate. Please. All right, Janet. Linda asked Mike to translate. And I want just translation. No commentary. I want to tell you how we got engaged. Mike said, Mary, say I give. And Mike said, let's get married. I give. And, and I ask you to return. Give. Total emotional commitment. Well, I could die soon. My parents died young. That was an accident. So my family's accident prone. Look at me. Look at your sister. She's all right. Well, you look at my sister. Maybe you should exchange emotional commitments with her. I love you. Hey, I know you. Something's on your mind. Yes, quite a lot. At first I worried that you'd never ask me to marry you. Then I worried that you would. Why should I trust you? You're a man. I hear people talk in front of me. They think I'm stupid, so I hear plenty. Men boast about how they hit and run, how many women they fool. How do I know that you won't be with me for a while? Make me fall in love with you, and then leave. It won't even be your fault. 
fault because men are taught that to be a real man, you cannot need someone. While I am a real woman, I am very powerful and it will terrify me because you will need me. Speaking from here, so there's nothing to learn here. Responsibilities. It's nobody's business. Wait, Mike, you could be left alone with little kids. You're just concerned with me? Well, thanks a lot, but nobody can tell the future. Meanwhile, we should be free to choose who we spend our lives with. When she was with me, she never needed anything. <coughs> Anybody. You tell that to him right now so he can come back to her. Okay. 